So now coming to uh, the second webinar, um, which is continuing on the theme of nucleation, but from a different aspect. And here I'd like to describe some dynamic experiments to maximize hits in screening and to improve crystal quality, but from another point of view. When we screen, then the hits that are considered worth pursuing are either crystals or crystalline precipitate or even phase separation. But clear drops are usually considered as a dead end and they're ignored. So what do we do when we get persistent clear drops in screening trials? We don't want to throw them away. So what do we do? There were means which people did sort of ad hoc kind of things to remove the cover slip for a short time and then put it back. But the, 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 mostly it was drying out and this was certainly not reproducible. There were other ways to uh, alter the ratios of proteins. Uh, but all these, they require multiple screening experiment. And when, when one has a limited amount of protein, you don't want to play around and have to do it again. So came a, a way, simple way to utilize the clear drops using the what used to be Nextal. Some of you have been in the business for a while will remember the Nextal company who eventually sold to Kai again and they're called Easy Nextal tool. And what is the, they're really Limbro plates, but they have got a screw cap uh, rather than those uh, cover slides that you have to seal with the this uh, Vaseline and they get stuck. So the screw cap is really um, made like that, that the angle allows, you can open and close it a bit, twist it around, and the angle of the cap allows various, of am various amounts of evaporation, but without exposing the drops. So if you, um, the, all other methods you either have to take off and the drop is exposed. Here, although you unscrew the cap, it's still, uh, it's still on. There's just sort of a little air getting in there. So for experimental, what we do here, it's really, uh, uh, as I say, it's a theme of nucleation still because it's induction of nucleation and subsequent arrest. So you take the screens as you normally would do with commercial screens. Here we're talking still manually. Uh, and then drops that remain clear after two weeks, then they're loosened by 90 degrees. So they're just loosened, but the cap is still sitting well on the, well, on the reservoir. And when do you seal? Reseal. So the amount of evaporation depends on either the angle of the cap or the time that it's loosened. If you uh, do it 180 degrees, of course, it'll go quickly. We find that optimum angle is 90 degrees. And then you reseal really when you, you look at it and when the drop visually shrinks, then you seal the cap. And here we can see there were difficult cases. We were not getting any hits. And by so opening the cap, just not opening, but uh, uh, twisting it, uh, we got hits within uh, anything between 22, 24 and 72 hours. And from there, we could take it further for optimization. So it was really pretty useful. And what is even better here that you can, because you can, um, you're really concentrating the trial and then arresting it, you can use much less protein uh, quantities, concentrations. So if you look at this uh, table, you see conventional methods and uh, you see, say, 20 mg per mil, and in the evaporation methods, you can use half that amount. Cardiac muscle, 10 mg mil, you can use 3 mg mil, because, of course, you're concentrating uh, as you're doing the experiment and using the same drop. You're not changing anything. You're loosening, concentrating the drops, and then arresting it. So we call it screening with a twist. Um, it's, of course, it extends the explored chemical space for each conditions, condition and detects the leads that would not have been found otherwise. 
and the heats are obtained with very dilute concentration. Now, say you can even take 0.5 megamil, you couldn't screen with that kind of concentration, but if you allow it to concentrate, you can, and this is different from the issue of saving samples using nanoliter drops, because even when you lose, you use nanoliter drops, you need to have them at a certain, I don't know, five, ten megamil. And often there is a problem that you cannot concentrate the protein to higher than that. And uh, in this way, you can use much lower uh, concentrations. Um, the leads are often uh, got in a shorter time than in standard because you're sort of hurrying the whole thing up. And I guess the best thing about it that you don't need to set up any extra drops. You're really playing with the same drop. And if you open and it's still clear, you can open further or you can uh, different angle to it. And here is just a, a, a case where we got where I was saying, what do we do when we get no diffraction at all? Look at your right hand side, a beautiful crystal, not a single spot. Then you get those others uh, also looking lovely, but diffraction only to three angstrom. You do this twist method, you get a crystal on your left, which doesn't look half as nice as those previously, but the diffraction is 1.5 angstrom and given the structure. Uh, now, this is manual, um, but uh, Molecular Dimensions has made a plate with this kind of screw caps, which one can dispense in, in, in the robot and then play with it afterwards. So you can use it for both screening and optimization, whichever way you prefer. Now, another one more method with just to do with um, Nucleation is the separation of, of um, nucleation and growth. And if you remember when I was showing the phase diagram, I said we want to either avoid the uh, nucleation zone completely or limit the amount. You can't always do that. And sometimes it's not a bad thing to get into the nucleation zone, but get the system out of it before it gets too late. So the top diagram shows, uh, again, the supersolubility curve, and the arrows show that we are starting in nucleation zone, or letting it get to the nucleation zone, and then moving it to the metastable. And crystals here, which are, um, this was a c cosinin on the left, just with normal, uh, letting the experiment take its own course, and uh, the one who's on the right gave the best differential ever of this by um, separating, and I'll show now how to do it practically. So if you take a um, vapor diffusion experiment, what you do, you set up the crystallization trial. Say you get uh, crystals and they are uh, too little or not good enough. You see that it's just always giving you either many small crystals or not at all. You can't get the in-between. So you set up a row in your Lindbro plate or external plate or whichever um, with the conditions that would give you those small crystals. Below that row, you set another row with conditions which are lower than those that would, would give you the crystals. So again, those with metastable conditions. And depending how long your, um, you, how long it takes you to get the small crystals, you sort of make a calculated guess when to transfer your cover slip. So for example, if crystals are formed within 24 hours, you're not good crystals, then you know that nucleation must have taken place between time zero and 24. So likely that it would be after two hours or five hours or six hours. So if you've got six drops on, in one row, well, which are giving you the bad crystals, you set those up and after two hours, transfer one cover slips to the second row where you've got lower conditions. After four hours, you transfer another one, six hours, another one, say eight hours, another one. Now, sometimes you get uh, that's enough sometimes uh, not and then you you do another iteration but again and, and again using the same drop you're not using more material now if some people have got if you've got the possibility there is um, 
in situ uh, dynamic light scattering uh, apparatuses, which you can do robotically and on very small samples, and they enable accurate timing of when to back off. So they tell you the moment you see some aggregation uh, profile in the uh, DLS, then you know that this is the time to back off. But most people don't have, uh, this is still, it's, it's good if you can, but it's expensive and it needs apparatus. Uh, so manually is really, all it means is two iterations. So if you see that after two hours, it's still giving, uh, maybe after two hours will give you nothing because you've moved it too quickly. After eight hours will give you too many because it's already gone too far by the nucleation. So you can take the in-between timing and you can um, quite easily do that. It takes a couple of days, really. Um, and this has helped really in our own hands and other people who I don't even know. I saw it in publications and like this Krengeletel is taken from the publication where people did it. And uh, you could, another way to do it also, you could dilute the experiment. So either way, you can... Uh, back off from the conditions. But um, the, the manual way to do it is probably the simple, simplest. And as I say, you've got two rows of uh, uh, two rows of trials and you just transfer from one to another. So in summary, I'd say that people, I, from what I know, mostly when they encounter problems with crystals, most go back to the molecular biology. And this is, of course, time and energy and uh, expense, but they feel comfortable and they start again. What I'm trying to relate to you here, that these, there are methods here that do not require much time or effort or sample or cost or equipment, and it's worth investing a little more time in the crystallization itself before going back to start the process all over again with the molecular biology. So there's no magic bullet, but there is a selection of user-friendly techniques. And if you keep an open mind, it's worth trying a variety of techniques uh, and some a bit outside what you're used to, but these really don't take you much out of what you would be doing in any case. And this is acknowledging many people who have uh, really worked uh, with me for years. What I'm showing here is things that we have designed over many years. And would like to thank them and the funding agents that gave us the uh, money to do it. <laughs>